Oh gosh, that's awful. I've I've been um <laughs> So I've just had Oh gosh. Right, okay. So I thought I was live and it did say it was live. Can you see? I'm hoping that you can all see it now. Um I'm hoping that it's all there. Everybody see it? You see it? Here we go, here we go. Oh, brilliant. Oh, gosh. Oh, I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> right, okay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Oh. Right. Right, I'm so sorry, everybody. Um, I'm having some real major issues here. I thought I was live, um, and as you can see, I've got to hear. <laughs> so I'm hoping that you can see me. Um, Evie, can you let me know, please, that you can actually see me live? Gosh, technology is a nightmare, for sure. Yes, you can see. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, brilliant. Oh, that is so good news. Right, okay. Evie, if you can... Um... Right, so I might have to just start my mouse again because I've already started mine and got halfway through. I'm so sorry, everybody. Um, right, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to um, start my mouse again, I think. Let me find my um, pencil. You can see you now. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, uh, okay. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm not, I won't start it again, but what I'll do is I will just go over what I've done and I'll talk to you about what I've done. Um, so I'm just texting Evie at the same time. Right. Okay. <laughs> so that's really funny. Right. So everybody, you have an outline. Okay. Let me, oops, uh, pencil. So we have uh, an outline of a little mouse. I'm just going to draw this in freehand. Okay. We've got his little ear here. I'm hoping everybody has already got theirs. And a big, big, big thank you, everybody, for joining me. I'm so sorry. Um, I've, I was trying to get on, and then I thought I'd gone live, and it said it was live, and then it, I don't think it was. Um, so everything should now be okay. I think, do you know what? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the one that I'd already started and we will start again um so what you're going to do is you're going to start with your eye okay um and you're going to take a, um, a sharp black pencil um if you haven't got a black pencil um you know you can use your biro you can use you know whatever um graphite pencil something like that it, it needs to be sharp okay um just because you're you want to be drawing sort of like nice clean lines so where the outline of your eye is um very very gently so when i talk about being gentle um, i'm talking about pressure where if you put it on the back of your hand it's not going to indent your skin and the best the best reason for being gentle on paper like this is because if you go wrong you can then you know um uh, delete it okay so uh what we're going to do is we're just going to go around the outline of the eye okay so just watch your shaping because this little eye is sort of um you're getting an echo on the oh gosh I, I, there's not a huge amount in fact what i might do is um you're getting an echo don't worry we're having a lovely chat is anybody else getting an echo back on not lost connection what's the sound like can somebody let me know what the sound's like please <sighs> Eee, honestly, what a nightmare. Is it still live? No, it's still going. I think it's all still live. It's all um, it's all going okay. 
if you can let me know what the sound's like. No echo, perfect. Oh, right, okay, all right. I'm just going to leave it because I don't think it's, I don't think it'll be me. I think it'll be you if there's an echo. Okay, so back to it. Um, so we're just going to go around the eye very, very gently. Okay, and then if you look around the outside of the eye, there's almost like a little ring around it, and we just want to bring this little ring around. It's like um, the the eyes, uh, the mouse's eyelid, just all the way round. There. Okay, and then once you've got that, just watch the shape. It's roundy at this end, and then it kind of goes to almost like a little point at this end. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to use a sort of like a little sketchy motion all around the eye, that, that edge bit there, just so that we can add in. It's almost like a little um, edge that, that, will, that will show that it goes into the hair at the other side. It just it's, So it's not like a clean line, if you like. Okay, so we now should have this round bit in the middle, round bit on the outside, and then this sort of jimpy line around it. Um, and then what we need to do is create the bit in the middle, which obviously I've already created. So we're looking at a straight line here. Okay, so this is the reflection in the mouse's eye. If you want to just colour the whole of the eye in black and just leave a little spot for the white, that's fine. You can do that. Um, and then we're just going to bring in these little shapes here. Now, once you've got your shape sort of mapped out, you can start to... Um, you can start to increase your pressure a little bit. Um, and then let's, let's go in here. Create that little bit there. So you should now have uh, something that resembles this, hopefully. Let's put a little bit more up in top here. Okay. And then what I've got is I've got my... Um, just a grey, any grey. This is a warm grey too, polychromos, um, but just a light grey. And we're just going to sort of fill in those light areas of the mouse's eye in there. Okay. Okay. And then just come in and fill in a little bit of these around the eye as well. So, right. So we've got the eye in, um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the fur, which obviously I've already started, which is, is fine. Um, now I'm using a, it's a, it's a Caran d'Ache Pablo, and it's the light ochre. So what you're after is something that's sort of like, a, not a bright yellow, but something that's almost like a, a brownie yellow, if that makes sense. And what we're going to do is we'll start on the head bit, um, and... We need to be really, really careful when drawing animal fur. So as you can already see that I've, I've started here, um, what we need to do is we need to follow the direction of the hair. Now, anybody who follows my tutorials knows that we need to, you know, following the direction of the hair is really, really important. So we're going to start around the eye and with just very light strokes again, we're just going to start coming around the eye. Okay, and the other thing that's really important when drawing animals is getting the length of the hair uh, correct. You don't want to be adding long strokes on something that's got short hair uh, because that then looks just really, really strange. And the reason why we, we follow, why it's so important to follow the direction of the hair is that um, it the direction of the hair basically is to do with what's underlying so what's underneath it so the muscles and the skeleton and all of that type of thing so you'll find on dogs and horses that the uh, the hair changes direction a lot so we've got this little mouse coming in here sketchy strokes you don't need to completely cover the surface of the paper with your pencil you can just put um, you know what we're trying to do is replicate the texture of the fur so you don't need to cover it completely you can leave little gaps leaving the little gaps is quite nice because then when you put the next color over the top you'll end up with um, three colors so even though you put two colors down you'll end up with three colors because you'll have this color you'll have the next color we're going to use and then we'll have the um, the color that you get when you overlap the two so then straight away you start to get a really nice difference with the hair. So again, um, 
questions, if anybody has any questions, just have some water. Um, please do, please do type them in the um, in the chat, and Evie will collate them for me and start to um, send them through. And then if I've got time at the end, um, I will. Um, answer all of your questions if I don't have time then I will either create a, a little video answering them all or I'll I'll answer them all and put them in Facebook so do ask questions if you need to I can't see the screen at the moment if I could see the screen I would have known that um, um, I wasn't live <laughs> so um, yeah uh, so again we're being really really careful to follow the direction of the hair still using nice light pressure we come down here over the top of this ear I'm just going to take a little bit of that graphite out there so you can use a rubber to, to uh, rub out coloured pencil it works really really well just send Evie a quick message just to make sure um, So then we come back down here again. Gosh, technology is a nightmare, isn't it? I've got it all set up. I did a test with Evie this morning. And then as soon as I came to go live, I was like, I can't, it's not working. <laughs> and then when I thought it got, was working, um, I started drawing and it was all lovely. And you heard all sorts of lovely things. And um, yeah, and it wasn't. <laughs> and then I drew half a mouse. But anyway, we're nearly there now. So, um, yeah, again, really, really watching the direction of the fur. And um, I like to I like to visualize and I like to think about what the hair would feel like if I was um, if I was actually touching the hair of the mouse, um, you know, when I'm drawing it. So, you know, something sort of quite soft looking, then my pencil strokes will need to be soft. Um, you know, if something's a little bit harsher then my pencil strokes would need to be a bit harsh. Um, so let's take those out. So at the moment I'm just using um, Polychromos pencils and the Pablos. So what I'll try and do is I'll try and um, tell you exactly which pencil I'm using as I'm using them. Um, but it doesn't matter because I know some of you aren't using, you know, you can use any pencil. Um, what I would say is if you're using something like a WH Smith pencil or something that's maybe not uh, artist grade, um, you may find that you need to just press a little bit harder with them because, um, you know, the pigment not, might not be quite as um, as good as the pencils that I'm using. But it doesn't matter. You just need to increase your pressure slightly. OK, so we've got quite a nice little um, mouse coming along there. We've got the colour going down um, and it's... Um, the colours are looking all OK. So next what we're going to do is we're going to take a pink. So any sort of pink. Um, this is the Caran d'Ache Luminance and this is Anthroquinoid Pink. Um, and I'm just going to, or I have, but I'm going to redo his little nose. Um, really, really nice light pressure again. And just we're just going to plop in a bit of colour in there. And then I'm going to come down and just put a tiny bit of colour into the little mouth area here and then down into the chin. Now this area here, what I was just saying about, you know, how the, the hair feels, this here feels very, very woolly. So I'm just going to draw woolly hair in there. So that's all good. And then I'm just going to bring a little bit of this pink up into this area here. Just so that we get a little bit of pinkness around the sort of the cheek hair, the edge of the cheek area and everything here. So we just need a tiny little bit of pink in there. I apologise if you can hear background noise. Um, there's builders building houses um, sort of down the street. And they haven't been noisy at all. And then now they've just decided to be noisy. So anyway, so hopefully you should end up with something that looks a little bit like that. 
Okay. And then we're going to take the, the lightish grey, whatever grey you've got that's light. If you haven't got a really light grey, I would suggest using either sort of like a, an off-white or a white. Um, the white, you should be able to get some sort of an impression. And we're just going to add this little pom-pom bit on the top of the nose. So we're just going to come in here and add in and then around here as well now this this is obviously white um, the mouse is or we look at it as being white but actually white is, is never really white and this white is sort of like more pink and grey so we can just add in a little bit of that again being really really um, light with the pressure and then we can add a little bit of the grey in here over where the little pinky bits and everything are in there okay So, and then we can use probably use a some sort of a white I've got this is the the best uh, my in my opinion this is the best white you can you can ever have this is the Caran d'Ache it's the museum aquarelle and it's the white um it's a really 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 good pencil it's a watercolor pencil as well so I'm just going to come in and just sort of um come over the top of the gray that I've just put in smooth it out and I'm also going to come in over the top of the pink um, and when you use a white like this over the top of your other colours, it will smooth it. So the little nose, we want it to be a little bit smoother. If you're using a paper that's that's a bit rougher than this, this white will really help to sort of smooth everything in and blend everything. And again, I'm going to use it just to come in here. It'll, it'll kind of dampen it back a little bit. It'll make it a little bit paler, but it'll also smooth everything. So again, you know, nice and sharp. Um, for smooth papers um you know you need to be using sharp pencils for smooth papers okay so again just coming in there like that that's looking okay okay so i hope everybody's okay doing this at the moment so now what we're going to do is we're going to bring in um it's, it's like well this is the character uh, the Faber Castell burnt sienna. Um, what you need to be looking for is a br some sort of a brown. Um, if you can get something a brown that's a little bit ready or a little bit of an orangey brown, that's perfect. Um, and we're just going to come in and start to add the the fur around the mouse. So this is the bit where I I got to where I was merrily carrying on, and then Evie rang me to say, "Where are you?" <laughs> And then I went into blind panic. I was like, oh, no. Um, right. So if you look at your reference photo, you'll see that around the eye, that little ring of yellow is actually doesn't have much brown in it. So we're going to leave that free of the brown. And we're just going to come in and very softly start to add this brown in. Now, the hairs on the mouse's head are longer. OK, so we can do more of a longer line in here, longer sketch in there. Okay, over the top of the yellow, and this is what we call layering. So this is what colour pencil artists do, is, is layering. And it's how we get all of our, um, the depth in the pieces that we do. It's how we get the details. Um, it's how we get all of the tonal values, you know, the darks and the lights. We layer a co one colour over the top of the other to get where we're wanting to get to. So if you just... Um, if you look at an animal, if you look at this mouse, you'll probably go, yeah, it's sort of a, a an orangey colour. But then when you look really closely at it, there's all sorts of colours in there. And I tend to um, start with the lightest colour that I can see, which was the yellow. Um, and I'll put some of that down first and then I'll start to build up from there and start to add other colours that I can see. So this sort of browny colour here, you can see re even with really light pressure, these pencils give quite a lot of um, pigment you know even when you're wanting really soft pressure and then we come into this bit here and this this bit is quite orangey and then we've got a big orangey patch there which we're going to put it put in in a second so just bring your brown in I've got Evie texting me every two minutes to make sure everything's okay I'm paranoid now I'm so sorry everybody <laughs> but I guess we haven't got anywhere else to go, have we? So um, we're we're in um, well, we're we're obviously the same as everybody else in the UK. 
sort of isolating ourselves um taking the dogs out for a walk um you know once a day and uh, we attempted to go shopping yesterday and then didn't because the queues were so long so we came home but um it's a it's a crazy crazy time out there it really is but uh I um I do think that there's been some amazing things that are happening. Um, you know, I, I always think something good comes out of something horrible. And for me, the something good is the reaching out to people that maybe you haven't reached out to before or, you know, coming together as a family a little bit more than you normally would do. Um, you know, my family, we're singing every night on the um, the Great British Home Chorus with Gareth Malone so we set up Zoom every night and we start to sing which has been really fun actually if a little strange because our our YouTubes are all at the same a, a different stage so we end up um we end up all singing at different times which is a little bit odd but um you know so still looking at hair direction we're going really really lightly we can start to see how this little mouse is is taking shape now again really softly um, with your pencil pressure if possible um, those who are using graphite pencils or biros or anything like that you, you're doing exactly the same thing but obviously you're just using one color so what you've got to concentrate on is your lights and darks so you've got to make sure that where your darks are it's dark and where your lights are it's light um, and anything in between that you know it's going to be in between so uh, that's what you have to concentrate on um, anybody doing it in colour, you have to concentrate on that and you have to concentrate on colour. So um, actually you've got it harder with, with colour than you have if you were just using um, a single colour. Okay, so we've now got to the point where we can start to add some orange. Um, and I have a very orange orange. Again, this is the uh, Caran d'Ache Pablo and this is reddish orange. So all you're looking for is an orange that is um, orange. <laughs> I just show you what an other an, an an other orange looks like that isn't quite so orange. So this this is uh, burnt ochre. Um, so that's orange, and that's the sort of orange we want. That much more vibrant, ready orange, if you like. So we're going to go in with the um, orange. Um, we're going to put a little bit on the top of the nose here. So now we're, we're drawing from fresh. I'm back to where I was after I'd done the the first live stream, <laughs> all to myself. Um, so we're just going to put a little bit of this orange in here. Again, we're going to work really nice and lightly. Um, we're going to follow the direction of the hair. And we're going to come down into this area here, which is a little, if you look at the picture, it's a little bit scrubby because the hair actually probably is pointing at us. Um, you know, and it's always like, well, how do I depict hair that's pointing at us? It's fine if it's going that way. It's fine if it's going that way, that way and that way. But if it's pointing at us, how do we show that? So what I do is I do like um, a round emotions and I make it so it's almost like scrubby. And then we can put little bits of um, extra colour in there. But if we make it scrubby, then the hairs aren't really going in any direction. And what happens is our brain takes over and says, oh, yeah, that hair's pointing at us. <clears throat> so our brains can be really, really helpful and they can also be incredibly annoying <clears throat> because what happens is when you're drawing something that you kind of think you know, so especially if you're drawing an eye, you just get a glass of water. <clears throat> if you're drawing an eye, um, Oh, I've just had a, a question from Evie about what paper I'm using. This is actually the um, Hannah Muller Nostalgie. So it's just a quite a, a, it's not very expensive. You get it in a massive pad of about 50 sheets. Um, and it's just very smooth paper. It's um, It's got a little bit of, um, of a texture to it, but it's more of a bump than a than a tooth, if you see what I mean. And actually, I like this paper because I can get, I can actually get, something from it um I, I don't really get on with the other smooth papers but this one I quite like if I was going to use a smooth paper this is the one that I'd like so it's the Hannah Muller Nostalgie and you can get it from Amazon you can get it from Jackson's you can get it from um yeah most most art outlets um so scrubbing in so yes with your brain if you're if you go to draw an eye you will draw what you think an eye looks like um, and when you're drawing, you actually have to um, try and switch your brain off. 
um, because it, it just takes over. Who's this? God, people ringing me. I can't have my phone on silent because Evie's Evie's keeping in contact with me to make sure everything's going okay. But uh, um, yeah, so you've got to kind of switch your brain off and not, and that's why a lot of people draw upside down. Um, because then your brain can't really make out what it is that you're drawing and then it, it, it'll it'll stop trying to interfere. But that's something I always say to anybody I'm teaching is, you know, you've got to try and switch your brain off um, because it will just jump in and, and it knows best. And it but it, well, it thinks it knows best. Mine certainly thinks it knows best and it doesn't I have to switch it off all of the time. So I'm going to bring this orange in again over the top of these browns that I've used. Not all of them, but in some places just where it's a little bit more vibrant. Um, again this is the layering process so we've got yellow down we've got a bit of brown down we're now just sort of starting to put a little bit of this orange down um, again it's not going everywhere um, if we were to put it everywhere you'd then get something that was quite flat so we need to kind of be a little bit selective about where we're putting um, the color so I'm just starting to um, pop it in in places just to the other thing as well is it will lift the colours underneath and it will also start to smooth. So I have to say the Pablos on this pen, on this paper are very, very nice. Um, so. Okay, right. So that's all looking okay. I'm just going to bring a little bit more of this orange up onto the bit of the nose here. And then we'll start to bring a little bit of that detail into that nose area. Okay. Send a quick text. Right, and then I'm going to take my yellow again. This was the uh, the Pablo Light Ochre. Um, and I'm just going to start to bring in a little bit more of this colour down here into the ear area. Okay. And then around here. And then into under here. So again, just watching your hair direction, the hair length. And just nicely sort of bringing that in and then we can bring a little bit more of that brown in. Now the hair, you know, there is quite a lot of um, texture in the hair here. And if I was doing this on something like pastel matte or if I was doing this on the drafting film, I would be using the um, the slice tool. My, um, see if I've got one here, where is it? Is. So I'd be using this, which is the slice manual pen cutter. Um, this is the most fantastic tool. Uh, I'm not going to use it on this. Um, well, I might do, but I don't think I will. Um, it's got a ceramic blade. So um, it's it's a safety knife, not designed for drawing, but artists have kind of um, taken it and <laughs> taken it to their hearts and absolutely love them. Um, and basically you scrape off pigment um, with the blade and because it's a ceramic blade, it lasts longer, it stays sharper for longer and it doesn't damage your paper. Um, you have always got to test your paper, however, but the slice tool is a really, really good, good, good piece of kit. Um, so if I was using my, um, if I was using drafting film, I would probably be using um, the uh, slice tool quite a bit to get all of this hair texture in. But we're not going to do that today because I know, you know, not everybody has got it and not everybody has got paper that they could use it on anyway. Um, so coming down here just a little bit. And then I'm going to, if you have a cream pencil, this is the... Um, Faber-Castell ivory. This blue thing on the end is a, um, I'll show you quickly. This blue thing on the end is the 
uh, is a pencil holder. And <laughs> so Vinnie has got hold of this and chewed it. So it's quite uncomfortable when I hold it in my hand. So I've, I've just put it in the pencil holder. And then when your pencils get get too short, you can put them in the pencil holder and it makes them longer. I think this I got from Amazon. I've got about five, I think, for, well, it wasn't very expensive, but they're really useful to have. Um, so this is the ivory, the, the uh, Faber-Castell ivory. And I'm just going to bring this in over the top of some of these colours again. Um, and just, I'm using a firmer pressure. And I'm doing something that's called burnishing. Uh, but it's a very light burnish because I don't, it, when you burnish, it means that you squash the tooth of the paper, any tooth of the paper, anything that's kind of sticking up, you squash it down um, and it makes everything smoother. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, and the other thing that it can do as well is it can actually make things a little bit more vibrant. Um, so I'm just going to do that and then I'm going to bring this cream into this area here. And there's a little bit of cream in there as well. I might just take the my Tombow and just lighten that up just a little bit. So you can actually draw with this eraser. It's brilliant. I, one of the techniques I use, the, well, a lot of the time, is the subtraction technique where you actually put your pigment in and then anybody who listens to my tutorials will be like, yeah, put the pigment in, take it out, put it in, take it out. But it works. <laughs> <laughs> it does work um, so I can just do that there we go right and then I'm going to bring in a brown like a proper brown so again this is the um, Faber-Castell polychromos and this is walnut brown you're just looking for for any sort of brown really um, and we're going to start to just bring in a little bit of this detail into the mouse's hair up here And these are sort of like almost um, stray hairs, like guard hairs. And it's just just the, the, the topmost bit of detailing really on top of that fur. Let's see. So I will, I will carry on uh, with this live stream. I know we said an hour and a half and I know I was 20 minutes um, late because I was talking to myself. So I, I will carry on, it's not a problem. Um, and I'll carry on until the mouse is finished. So if anybody wants to stay with me, that's absolutely fine. Um, and then the recording will be available afterwards to rewatch if you if you want. <laughs> so here we go again. So we've got these little tufts coming in over the top of his head here. <clears throat> and then again just watch the direction of them some of them have got like a little bit of a curve um it when you're putting your uh, the tufts in if you start at the base of the hair where the hair is growing from and move upwards and aim to sort of like lift your pressure as you get to the tip you get these nice sort of um fine little hairs rather than something that's ooh, ooh, ooh. um you know you're looking for these nice little soft soft hairs it's always best to try and draw in the direction of the fur growth. But um, there are sort of, you know, sometimes you can't do that because your paper's in a funny position or, you know, something like that. Some people like to turn their paper round, um, you know, and that's something that you can do, you know, to try and get your arm in the right position. So we'll just get a little bit down here. So hopefully what you're getting is a, um, you know, quite a nice looking little mouse in there. You know, relatively simple. You know, we're not using any mad techniques or anything. We're just using pencil, just, <clears throat> um, you know, just draw, just drawing. That's that's all we're doing. Um, you know, you can see my outline is very basic. Um, I tend to do very basic outlines um, just because I get confused and I tend I like to freehand. So I like to. Um, I like to kind of just draw all of the details in as I see them on the picture. Um, but, um, you know, it, it's quite it's quite good just to sort of whiz around the outline quickly so that you've got everything in the right place and then you can concentrate on all of the details and everything. And, um, you know, OK, so that's looking all OK. Let's just go in here a little bit more and just get a bit more detail in there.
So you can see my pencil strokes are quite sort of, um, they're still quite sketchy. I'm not being overly careful. Um, and it's, I, I quite like to get this sort of nice sketchy feel in because the hair then looks a little bit more alive rather than being too um, sort of um, prescribed, I suppose. So we've got that little mousy in there. Right, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in that black again and we're going to be, oops, where is it? <clears throat> I'm going to be incredibly brave and we're going to draw some whiskers. Whiskers um, terrify me. Um, am I using a back and forth motion with the point of the pencil continuously on the paper on each stroke individually? Right, okay, so let's just take the, take the yellow again <clears throat> and demonstrate that. So what I'm doing is um, I'm usually just going that way but sometimes <laughs> I'll go both ways. Um, it's just how I feel it, 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 it should come along. So in some places you see that there's um, brighter pigment. And in those places I might, instead of increasing my pressure, I might just use a back and forth motion with my pencil still on the paper. In the areas where it's much lighter, I will probably just use one stroke going um, you know, on the paper, just in one direction. So it just depends on um, the the strength of the pigment on the actual animal I'm drawing. So again, here, this is quite strong pig pigment here, so I might go backwards and forwards. Um, it, it has to be relevant to the fur that I'm drawing, um, you know, so you've got to kind of take that into account as well. Hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to be doing... Uh, whiskers and like I said whiskers terrify me they absolutely terrify me I don't know what black whiskers particularly terrify me um, so we're going to go sh sharp pencil and we're going to go light pressure and we're going to put our brave pants on and just go for it now if they come on too hard and they're too dark we can just dampen them down a little bit with an eraser um, but uh, I always have to take a deep breath when I do, do whiskers OK, and um, if you've done one like that and you meant it to be longer, leave it like that. Don't try and extend it because it will always look a bit odd. Um, and then we can just add some little ones kind of coming in here. And once you've got the hang of it, once you've done two or three, you're aware you'd be drawing whiskers everywhere. Um, you know, you'd be like, oh, God, what was the what was the problem there? I love drawing whiskers. Um, <laughs> and then the next time you have to draw a whisker, you're like, oh, no, I draw a whisker. Um, so again, whiskers here. Whiskers everywhere, really nice light pressure. And you're looking for, I don't know whether you can see my hand, you're looking for sort of like a flick of the wrist more than anything. Oh, we've got a whisker up here, look, that's all right. And then we've got to try and get these whiskers in here. So this is where the whiskers start in here. If we can get them in here. I mean, they don't have to be perfect. Um, you know, we've got some little ones in there. And then you've got some ones coming out there. It's like you've got hold of your pencil and you're just pulling it down. And then these go into there. That's all right, actually. That looks okay. So I'm just going to darken those up a little bit again using my um, orange again. So I'm going to come in around the black and just start to put a little bit more pigment in there. Now, a paper like this, you're going to be able to get probably I don't know, 20, 20 layers on it, maybe more. Um, depending on the pressure that you're using, um, you know, but if you're using night light, light, nice, light, nice, light pressure, um, you will um, be able to get quite a lot of layers in here, um, which means that, you know, you can get a lot of depth and you can get, um, you know, all of that nice detail in there as well. So we'll get a little bit more orange in there. You'll also find even the pencils that are uh, by the same manufacturer, so Pablo's, you'll find that the the different pigments, the different colours, will feel differently on the paper. It's it's a bit bit strange, but that's how it that's how it goes. Right, so I'm going back to using my uh, warm grey. So any grey that's really pale, <clears throat> and I'm going to add the other whiskers in around here. So I'm going to bring some whiskers in here. <clears throat> a very whiskery mouse 
and then I'm going to use my Tombow, just going to take some more water. I'm just going to use my Tombow, you don't, you don't have to, you can just, um, if you've got a rubber you can just erase it a little bit. I just want to sort of lighten this up a little bit but it doesn't matter. <clears throat> okay so then this is the polychromo cinnamon it doesn't matter if you haven't got it um you can use again you can use sort of like any sort of pink the, oh gosh this is um a sort of a, a brownie pink it's like a, a cinnamony color hence the name um it's a brownie pink um, and I'm just going to bring this in here into this area here around um, this little sort of scrubby patch on the cheek. Now um, pinks and oranges work really really well so you know if you've got a chestnut animal um, you know having sort of like a um, well you'll have all sorts of different chestnut animals you'll have the sort of the, the greeny based gingery chestnut and you'll have the pinky based gingery chestnut so the pinky bases work really really well with the oranges um so um you know this is this is always a color i have out when i'm drawing oranges the other color that is fantastic for um orange is it's opposite on the color wheel i'm just going to show you this just as i can <clears throat> oops so this is a colour wheel, I don't know whether you can see it all, um, and it shows you the relationships between colours. I'll just very, very quickly show you that the um, if we're doing orange, oops, if we're doing orange, the opposite of orange, orange here, is blue, and then you've got complementary colours either side. So you've either got a greeny orange or you've got a more bluey violety orange. So using a violet like I've got here is perfect for using with oranges for shadows so when you're looking for shadow areas for your orangey animals the best color you can use is a purple or a violet um, depending on you know the color of your fur you might have to go green so this is this is a sort of this is called violet brown so it's a violet color but it's got like a um, it's not particularly vibrant um, so if you've got a purpley color um, failing that just a, a brown will be absolutely fine um, and I'm just going to start to bring in a few of these little shadowy areas into here and then we're going to crack on and do the, the bottom bit here as well and I'm also going to come in here and start to add in just a little bit more detail around the little face here so using the pur the purpley colours in with your oranges you, it, it's not going to make it orange it's just going to sort of tint that orange back and it's going to make it look like a shadow um, you know, it's a, it's it, well, it's the it's the color to use for your shadows. So I do a lot of those uh, these sorts of color color things. Um, I do live streams for um, you know people who subscribe to me. I do live streams for them on this sort of thing, and it it, it is really really um, useful to kind of know the relationships of colors. So I'm just again just going to bring that in here and just very gently bring in a bit of detail into here where his little mouse is mouse mouth okay and then i'm going to use the warm gray again and just bring that in here again if i was using my slice tool i'd use my slice in here and just bring in some um sort of hair detail and stuff in there but i'm going to just bring a little, tiny little bit of this purple in just to show the hair strokes <clears throat> where did you buy your colour wheel someone asked Amazon <laughs> I got two I got two for about I think it was about six pounds um, really really useful piece of kit um, useful to have up on your wall useful to have on your desk just to see the relationships of your colours <clears throat> you know it's um, it is it is a good piece of kit to have I mean I uh, colour is something that comes naturally to me because I worked in the print industry for so long um, you know so you kind of get to know what what colors are mixed with what but it's it, it is a little bit different when you're um, you know trying to trying to do with you know your color pencil work and everything um. 
so he's looking he's looking okay right so I'm going to bring that gray in again so this is my warm gray too and I'm just going to bring in some of this color into the ear and all I'm going to do is just shade in that shape there you can see it goes on really nice and smoothly I'm just going to put all of that color in that shape there I don't want to leave any gaps in there I want it to be a smooth color and I'm just going to take out that little bit of graphite there that's the thing about doing an outline you end up with the um, you end up with the lines in there and it gets a bit irritating so that's that and that's sort of like the top bit of his ear there and I'll just take out that bit there okay and then I'm going to use the yellow again and I'm going to very lightly put the yellow in over the top of the grey. So we've got um, we've got a, a reflection in this ear of his fur, and that's yellow. Okay, so I'm just going in there like that, and then I'm going to use this purpley colour, or you can use a brown, and just come in and get some of that shading in there so this is a, you know this is a, a relatively speedy drawing <clears throat> I just want to bring in some of those darker areas of the ear again I'm using this violet brown the uh, luminance violet brown for that and it's um, I guess you don't know the colors to use until you understand the relationship or you've seen the colors on top of one another and then you can be like oh yeah I can see how that works now and the more you do and the more you use your colors the more you'll be able to um, you know put a color down and then recognize instantly what other color you need to put on um, you know so you will have your go-to colors that's a bit what a bit wide is that isn't it oh sorry you will have your go-to colors so the colors that I use will be very very different to colors that other artists use because we all have our favorites and we all have the ones that you know work for us and, and what we're drawing so i've got this um light ochre out again and i'm just going to start coming down and doing the back of the mouse so again i'm going to be i'm not too bothered about this graphite because i can incorporate that into the darker um, strands I'm starting to use a little bit um, harder pressure um, just because this area down here is slightly more pigmented and I'm working in the direction of the fur and I'm just wanting to sort of bring in that texture texture of the fur now what you could do is you could go through the whole of this and put all of your darks in first um, you can plot all of your um, you know plot all of the uh, shadows and stuff like that what I'm going to do is just sort of leave some spaces where we can bring those shadows in um, and it's going to look a little bit ugly for a while <clears throat> Vicky wonders why we were embossing the outline at the start was I embossing the outline um, I'm not sure I was embossing the outline um, I was just you mean drawing the outline oh um i gave you instructions that you could emboss the outline if you wanted um yes yes so if you emboss the outline it means that you get it on the page um, and you can see where the outline is that's just for someone who um maybe can't trace off the screen or something like that and it, it works um it works it works really nicely the only thing is if you emboss i'll show you <clears throat> let me see if i've got an embossing tool somewhere go so I'm hoping I'm hoping you can see this if I move this over here so if I if I emboss something I'm putting like a line like that so this is really good for whiskers so this is just a, an embossing tool again from Amazon so if I was going to do my whiskers first it'd be like I could emboss them and then I can bring in a color over the top and what happens is when you bring the color in over the top it will just completely miss out where you've embossed so you can actually get your hairs in your whiskers in you know anything like that you can get in 
Now, I was suggesting we emboss the outline if you if you didn't have any other means of doing it, because then you can still see the outline, um, you know, without having to trace it or anything. Um, anyway, I hope that makes sense. It probably doesn't. There we go. Um, right. OK, where were we? Yellow. So let's carry on down the, the back of this little mouse. See what time it is. So again, I'm just working with the length of the fur, the direction of the fur. I'm being quite rough and sketchy, you know, I'm not being overly careful. I'm just getting all of that in. Just be careful you don't go get carried away and just go because then we will have a we'll have a mouse that looks ready for winter. Um, you know, really, really long hair. You get those mice, don't you, with the really long hair. Um, yeah, we, we're not looking for that. <laughs> we're looking for like an ordinary harvest mouse. Um, I don't even know what those long-haired ones are called. They're probably winter harvest mice in their winter woolies. So um, again, you know, really careful about your hair direction. I know I go on about it and people probably, you know, are shouting, saying shut up. But um, it is really important because if you don't get your hair direction in the in the right, you know, if you don't get it right it just it looks wrong it just looks wrong so it is important okay this pencil would actually be better if it wasn't quite so sharp um i don't really work with sharp pencils um the paper i use i can um i use really blunt pencils so i've, I've spent all morning sharpening these especially for this afternoon um all my other pencils are completely blunt or on the floor so we come down here, the uh, the um, changes again, the direction changes again, and then we move into here. So again, I'm using sort of one, one stroke. Um, there might be places where I just want to darken it up a little bit, so I might go backwards and forwards. Um, but we've got basically the direction of the mouse's fur there. Okay. Um, I'm then going to use, I quite like this orange, I have to say. Yeah, I think I'm going to bring some of this orange in over the top because I think that worked quite nicely. And then I'm going to use the um, burnt sienna again. So this is the reddish orange, the Pablo reddish orange. And you can see I'm actually going backwards and forwards in here because what I'm doing is I'm just tinting areas. I'm just going in and just wanting to sort of not not obliterate the... Um, the lines and on the first layer so I still want to see those lines coming through but I just want to bring in sort of this color over the top um, now the mouse's hair is quite sort of sketchy it's not smooth it's not you know it's not perfectly groomed it's sort of you know a little bit all over the place so we are better being a little bit looser with how we're getting these colors in So, you know, a bit, bit sketchy. Okay, so I'm just going to get some of that orange in and then I'm going to bring some of the brown in. <clears throat> and then we're going to get some of that nice, um, the sort of clumps of um fur in there you know the shadow and everything in there and that's always a um something that's a bit scary you know when you look at something like this you're like well how on earth do i get those those shadowy bits in um you know and it's 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 good to be it's good to plan it's good to kind of you know figure out what it is that you um, you want to be you want to be doing and whenever i'm doing um a piece whenever i'm starting a drawing or i've got a, a drawing coming up i always um I, I visualize I always visualize exactly what I'm going to be doing so I'll, I'll I'll really really think about the techniques I'm going to use I'll think about the paper that I want to use um you know the colors although I don't choose my colors to begin with I'll I'll, I'll have a good idea of the colors I'll be using but I never I'm, oh, I'm honestly so lazy so I never get any of my colors out before I start a piece I just start um you know I'll kind of know the colors that I want to use but then you know I might be surprised at what colors I then pick so 
um, the dog that I've just drawn recently, the, the lovely fox red Labrador. I used colours that I hadn't used before um, and they worked incredibly well. Um, you know, but I hadn't when I'd visualised it, I wasn't using those colours. So I'm always um, I'm always aware that, um, you know, things can change. And uh, but I like to I like to have it in my head how I'm going to do something. I like to be planned in my head, even though I'm completely chaotic outside of my head. I'm quite ordered inside. So I'm going to go now with the um, burnt sienna again. So this is um, all this is the sort of the, the ready brown. And I'm going to come lightly into here. So we've got quite a nice little shadow around this mouse's ear here. And we can just pull that in there. Again, you know, quite a sketchy feel to this. It goes down quite smoothly on this paper. If anybody's wanting to, to try a smooth paper, I would recommend this. Um, if you if you follow artists, if you follow an art, a German artist called Amy Schutz, you should really be following her work. She is Oh my goodness, she's amazing. She's just done some the most gorgeous cats, but she uses this this paper quite a bit. Um, I've got one of her pieces on my wall. I'm very very lucky. Um, but go and have a look at her work because she uses this paper quite a bit and it, and is you know um, uses it very very nicely. So um, I, I would definitely recommend this paper if you were wanting to try something a little bit smoother. Um, you know. And you don't get on maybe with the vellums, you know, the Bristol vellums or something like that. Definitely try this one because it's, I prefer it. Um, I think I get a nicer result on it. Um, I don't use it very often um, because I, I've got my other two favourite papers, but it's, um, yeah, I, I would recommend it. So I'm just going to come down here. And I'm going to add in down this little mouse's back. Now there's all sorts of colours in here that you could put in which we're not going to do today, but there's some purples in there. There's um, sort of pinky bits in there. Um, you know, you, you can you can really, really go to town with the colours that you use, but we're, we're just keeping it quite simple, which is unusual for me because I normally use about three million pencils. <laughs> I usually start with one set. I'm like, right, we're going to use these. And by the end, I'm onto something completely different, which, yeah. <laughs> But I don't think I don't think my um, I don't think my subscribers mind. I, th I think they uh, I think they've got to know me by now. <laughs> okay, so come down here, and then we're just going to bring in a little bit more. We're just looking at sort of popping in this brown just to get a, a feel of this fur. Um, you know where the the sort of clumps and the shadows and everything. We can just start to bring those little shapes in. So we're always looking for shapes when it comes to um, animals fur, especially fur that's a little bit, um, um, you know, furry. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, we're always looking for shapes. So if you look to, to, to recognise shapes rather than try and draw fur, it's much easier. You know, so you might be able to see sort of like a triangle here, um, you know, sort of like a, a shape that looks like, I don't know, a pair of eyes or you know anything like that you you just you, you're looking for shapes that you can then relate to um and then draw those so here we've got two sort of things that look a little bit like gills um so we can just pop those in and then we can come back down here and start to just get a little bit more You know, you can really, really go to town with the tools and everything that you can use with your coloured pencils. You can, oh my goodness, there are some amazing tools that you can use, some absolutely fantastic techniques and everything. Um, and what's lovely is that every artist is different. So, you know, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be using exactly the same tools, exactly the same paper, exactly the same colours, exactly the same picture, and you will come out with something completely different. Because, you know, it's not just about a technique, it's about your mood, it's about your personality, it's about, you know, um, everything. It, it's all very, very unique to you is the drawing. Um, and that's one of the reasons why um, I just share everything because, you know, I, nobody can be me. But what you can do is you can take some of the techniques I use, you can use them in your way and then, you know, you can be you. Um, and that's brilliant. You know, and there's nothing nicer than seeing other artists succeeding and, and doing well. 
um, you know, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm always sort of, yeah, always really, really happy when I see people doing well. I'm going to end up losing my voice. So again, just coming down here using these sort of sketchy movements because I'm wanting to get that texture of the mouse's hair in here. So, and then I can come in and I can start to uh, build those darker areas there, which I'll come and do soon because I'm, what time are we on? Okay. So we should have been finishing at, at uh, half past five, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry on because obviously <laughs> I made a massive boob. Um, so, um, you know, anybody who wants to stay with me, you can. I'm, I'm going to kind of work through this and sort of finish it. It's, it won't be long now. Um, you know, it's quite a, quite a quick little piece, actually. Um, and hopefully you'll have some techniques that um, you can take to, to do other pieces. This, th this is similar to how I would work with uh, drafting film and how I'd work with pastel mat. If I was working on pastel mat, I would be doing um, where I've got sort of two, three layers here now. I'd probably bump that up to maybe eight or nine layers, depending on what I was drawing. And I would be using sort of like quite a lot of um, um, sort of subtraction so taking out um you know getting this sort of fur in here because it's quite it's quite furry you know there's lots of fur lines in so i'd probably be working and, and, and trying to get that in um so right so i'm going to bring the that purpley color in and we're just going to start to bring in a little bit of those shadows now what i find a really good way of getting a, a shadow area in fur to make it look like it's actually underneath a layer of fur is to go upwards with my pencil so instead of just shading in a block I'll kind of go upwards uh, what form do you normally buy your paper in sketchbooks pads I buy all my paper in sheets so uh, I buy them in large sheet format so my um, drafting film is 90 by 60 centimeters I think <clears throat> and my pastel mat I buy in sheets of 50 by 70 um I don't buy I don't buy sketchbooks well I do I tell a lie I do buy sketchbooks um I've got loads and loads of different paper samples um so I've got tons of those but the paper that I use for my um commissions and my tutorials I buy in sheet format and I usually buy them from um the SAA so the teaching art or I'll buy from Jackson's um, just because I've got, I'm a, a, you know, you've got membership and you can get discount, um, you know, off your order and everything, which is good. I'd say if you're an artist anywhere in the world, you should definitely be a member of the SAA because you can get all of your insurance, indemnity insurance and all of that type of stuff. So it's definitely worth it. <clears throat> so you can see here, this is this is working quite nice, this the purpley colour to put these shadows in. So again, I'm going up and under. Well, it, it sounds silly, doesn't it, up and under, because we're working on a flat surface, but I want it to look like the hair is coming over the top. So if I work under, as if I'm pushing it under that little flap of hair, then it um, it's going to look more realistic. These don't have to be in the perfect position. Um, you know, and that's one of the reasons why you won't you won't see an awful lot of my work with you know whether you do the split photo <clears throat> because um, mine mine never looked like the photograph <laughs> so I don't I don't ever I make quite a few changes um, and I don't make changes um, where I'm like right I'm going to change this and I'm going to change that what happens is um, because of my total and utter lazy characteristics. I will draw something and I'll be like, right, I'm drawing fur. Oh, that looks all right. That looks like fur. Good. We'll leave that. <laughs> and for me, as long as um, as long as I've got a look and a feel of fur, as long as as long as it looks like, you know, what the fur should look like, then I'm happy. Now, clearly, when you're drawing a commission of somebody's animal, it needs to look like somebody's animal. So you've got to get, you know, certain things spot on. So eyes and markings and all that type of stuff. But when you come to, uh, say, a spaniel with, you know, hair all over the place, well, you know, I'm not looking to get the hair in exactly the same place as the photograph because 
you know, the dog could move and you could have a second photograph very similar to the first and the hair would be all very different. So I don't get hung up on um, copying a photograph exactly. What I'm looking for is the look and feel, you know, of that animal. There's nothing wrong with copying a photograph exactly, you know, and you have to be incredibly skilled to be able to do it and incredibly patient. Um, you know, um, I prefer just to sort of, you know, wing it. <laughs> It's probably not something I should be saying. I don't wing it at all. I'm very professional and, and I and I do everything properly. Um, so I can hear quite a few of my patrons laughing now going, no, she's telling the truth. She just wings it. <laughs> You'll see I've done some videos before where um, uh, I've been trying out sort of like a new product or something like that. And oh, my goodness, I've made an absolute mess. I, I video it all and I send it to them and I'll say, yeah, you know, you can use it if you want, but it doesn't work for me. <laughs> they see me. It's got it all over my hands it's everywhere. So, uh, you know, I like to show things that go wrong in my videos as well, because I think it's important to, you know, to, to be able to see how to bring things back. Um, so again, these are going in quite subtly. And then once you've got the shaping in, you can then start to darken them a little bit. And then we can bring the yellow back in. <clears throat> so I'm hope, hoping that you, um, I'm hoping that you're following this okay and that it's, uh, you know, you're enjoying it. Because I, I, I really, really like live streams. Uh, you know, I, I do quite a few of them for my patrons and I, I, I actually really like them. Um, I, I, I like talking. I like chatting about what I'm doing. Um, you know, I have a little joke to myself, hoping that everybody else is laughing along. They're probably all raising their eyebrows at me. But, uh, you know, so I do hope that you're um, you're enjoying this and it's and it's giving you a little bit of something. I know that it's not my usual real in-depth style, but, it, you know, we'd have probably got the eye done. In a, well, that's a lie. We'd have got far more than an eye done. But, you know, I, I wanted to get quite a bit of it done. Um, in the hour and a half giving you giving you techniques that you can then use and sort of um, you know hone and and sort of work on <clears throat> um, you know with as few pencils as possible really um, and the other thing as well is I'd love it if you have drawn this mouse and you have enjoyed it you know do send me an email with your with what you've done because I'd love to make a montage of it um, and post it on my social media because I, I I just think you know how things are going at the moment it's absolutely bonkers it's crazy you know um some people are very anxious um you know i kind of just get on with things and um uh, I'm, i must admit i'm not listening to the news because you know <clears throat> that's just me i just i just you know um so um you know it's, it's nice to be doing different things it's nice to be doing fun things and things that we would never really have done before um you know so actually it's 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 quite nice that people are uh, sort of you know making things possible for others you know through something that's happened that's absolutely awful <clears throat> right so we're going to go back in with the yellow <clears throat> yeah so evie's sending me all these questions which i was going to answer at the end but i can read them on my text so people are wondering if you could put together a list of the pencils you've used for this the name of the paper etc i will put all of that into the um the description in the youtube uh description panel bit thing uh, i'll do all of that for you not a problem and the other thing that i can do as well is i can um i can make like a little list of the pencils and everything and just upload that onto my social media as well so you can have like a materials list with all of these i mean these colors weren't particularly picked out um specifically for this this is just i've looked at the photo and i've gone yeah i'll use that and i'll use that um i've got colors that i've picked out that I haven't actually used so um yeah i can do that for you no problem so i'm going to go back in again with this purple and i'm just going to darken that up a little bit I won't go. I won't go too much into detail here. You can you can put more detail in if you want, but we get we get the gist, and it still looks sort of you know relatively realistic. Um, the the purple color is a, is like I said before, it's perfect for shadows on orangey animals, and there's all sorts of purples that you can use. Um, there's another really good one. Um, the where is it? 
I don't know where it is, the violet grey. I'll put it in here. It's here, look. The Luminance Violet Grey. This is another really, really good colour for um, uh, for orange animals. It's just a, it's just perfect. Um, you know, it's 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 a grey, but it's got like a violety tinge to it, as as the name would suggest. Um, and it's um, it just works really, really well with your with your orangey animals. So um, you know, I've also got a list of we've been doing orangey animals. I've got a list of the hues and um, the ones that you can mix together to get good colours, which um, I can also make available actually. So we're back on with this yellow and then let's do a little bit of this um, down the uh, the chest area. So I'm going to use a little bit of the pink, a little bit of this um, cinnamon. This is the polychromo cinnamon. I'm going to use it very, very nice and lightly. Now, when we're drawing white fur on white paper, uh, that scares people quite a lot. People are, are people are terrified of doing that. Um, so and I love it. I absolutely love drawing white fur on white paper. Um, I like the subtlety of it. I like the um, the softness of it. I just think it works really, really nicely. So all I'm doing here is I'm kind of figuring out the coloured bits in, in this chest area here. And I'm going very, very, very lightly, as lightly as I possibly can, so that I'm just getting a... Um, oh, what have I got here? Are you blending as you go or do you do that later? And do you prefer points? Right, so when I'm layering, is blending at the same time. So I'm not going to come back over this and, and um, burnish it. So it blends at the time that I'm um, working on it. Now you can use different products. So you can use the blend. So you can use something like, I won't use it because it's a bit mucky, but this is a paper stump. I might use it in here. You could use something like that to kind of rub over the top. You're sort of uh, um, burnishing a little bit and you're squashing all of the too thin. So you could do that if you wanted. But actually, I'm quite liking the the um, you know the roughness of of what we've got going on here. Quite like these strokes in there. Um, so you can do that if you want, or you can just you can just um, you know smooth and blend as you go, which is what I tend to do. Um, so really, really light pressure, and I'm just picking up on the colour that's in here. So I'm not putting colour in everywhere. I'm just sort of dropping it in in places so that I can get this sort of texture. I don't know whether you can see that in there and I'm going to move to using a, a grey in a minute and then I'm also going to bring in this is the burnt ochre so this is um, another sort of orangey colour but if you compare it to that orange they're very different so this is a much more this is an ochre so this is a much more browny colour than the orange and I'm just going to bring in a very 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 light 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 little sort of fluffy layer here where you just see a little bit of the mouse's fur from the other side and actually this would be better for me if my pencil wasn't quite as sharp I was thinking oh I'd be really professional I have sharp pencils and yeah, I work better with the broken ones just picked up off the floor and people think I'm joking and I'm really not <laughs> they'll just drop drop on the floor the dog eats half of them and then I'll just carry on so, but the dogs are outside. I gave them both um, both a bone each and they're outside. So they're very happy. Right, so then we've got that bit there. I'm going to take out this little bit of um, graphite in there because that's just irritating me slightly. Um, and then I've got the warm grey again. So this is the um, Polychromos Warm Grey 2. This pencil is like a magic wand. This is the holy grail of pencils, this one here. Um, this one, when you use it on pastel mat, is the pencil that you can use so that you don't have to put 50 trillion layers um, on your work. Um, you know, you can use this over the top of other colours and it will smooth and blend brilliantly. It is it is a magic wand and it is when I'm teaching, I'm always going on about warm grey too. Warm grey too, warm grey too, warm grey too. It's the, it's the perfect, perfect pencil for blending and smoothing on pastel mat. Um, and it's a really, really nice, subtle colour for creating white fur on white paper because it's um, I like to mix my my warm and my cool hues. So when I talk about warm and cool hues. So you can see these two pencils here. So this is warm grey too and this is cold grey too. OK, so you can see this one is a little bit more yellowy, warmer. 
and this one is more bluey cooler and I like to I like to um, mix the two so usually in a picture what you have is you or a photograph you'll have some really warm areas of color so the ones that are sort of you know ready yellowy um, well not all yellowies because some yellows can be a little bit cooler but you know the the where you where you feel that the color is warm and then you'll get areas that are probably in shadow and they're most likely to be the cool colors but actually mixing the two so mixing warm and cool colors together you can get some really really nice effects especially when you're drawing white fur be really really nice so you can see as i'm drawing this fur when you look at the mouse there's not really any def definition in the fur on this chest area here um so i'm kind of just sort of putting pigment in um you know and it's and it's fine and it's working fine um, these are little tufts here um which karen dash luminance colors do you use the most often oh um so definitely the sepia uh, sepia 50 percent, sepia 20 percent um and i really like their um burnt ochre and i really like their burnt sienna i particularly like luminance on drafting film um, they're a really, really, really nice pencil on the drafting film. They, they're so creamy and they blend beautifully. Um, right, I'm going to use, this is the cold grey, polychromos cold grey too. So the polychromos are, a, are, are a, a brilliant pencil and I would recommend anybody wanting to get into coloured pencil, the polychromos would be a, a, your, your best starting point. Um, you know, it's a, it's got a really good range of colours. So there's um, 120 colours. Um, they're all bar a couple the light fast rating is really good so when I talk about light fast um, it's how long the colors will stay true before they um, you know start to fade um, so they've got really good light fast ratings and they're just they've got a really good range of colors and they're just they're just good all-round pencils so these are kind of my workhorse pencil. These are the sort of like, you know, your go-to pencils. And then then you get sucked into the whole coloured pencil world. You know, you join the groups, you meet other people, and then you start buying every single coloured pencil make that you possibly can. And then you end up, you know, totally in poverty because you've got bought so many pencils. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> but it happens because it's you know somebody's like oh have you tried this and you're like no I haven't tried that oh my goodness I'm gonna have to try that and then you end up just buying all of these sets of pencils and then if you're anything like me then I buy and I end up buying all of like the crayony type ones as well so I'm 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 working with um, the Caran d'Ache uh, Neo Pastel and the their Aquarelle wax crayons and they're just amazing um, you know so uh, yeah you kind of get sucked into it all but the luminance are are lovely really nice pencils so that's all looking that's all looking okay so what you're looking for is softness um you know so light pressure and i can just blend this into the, the pinks that i put in first i can blend the pinks in and then if you want if you've got something like this this little tombow um i can then come in and i can start to create sort of like some little fur lines in here and I can start to create a little bit more um, sort of dynamic fur, if you like, because I can I can use this. To, it's almost like you're drawing with a white pencil. So I can bring in some of the fur lines and that works really, really well. And then if you wanted to, I'm not overly sure how the um, how the slice works on the nostalgia, but you could come in. Oh, works really well. <laughs> <laughs> there we go it works really really well so the slice tool works well on the nostalgia um so i'm I kind of I, people ask me how i hold my slice tool so I, I hold it upside down like that and then i turn it slightly to the left and i use it to scrape so i'm not cutting i'm just scraping so i'm going in here and i'm just sort of coming in and just sort of gently scraping pigment off you can see where it's come off on the blade there um and i can just start to create a little bit more texture in there i won't go very far but it's just a demonstration of how it can how it can work this is an amazing tool um a really really amazing tool so look i can get some nice whiskers in there oh it works really well on this paper 
so you know you can go a little bit you can go a little bit crazy that's the problem you, it's like the whiskers you start off tentatively then everything is just like I'm gonna slice it all I'm going in I'm going in I'm just gonna slice it <laughs> everything's gonna be sliced um this is a um if I was to recommend any tool this this would be it um it, it's just it's the best thing it's the best thing anyway so we'll leave that and we'll just come gently down into um just onto his little tummy here again this is white but we can just bring a little bit of this cold gray in so again we're going to go nice and smooth and what i can do is i can just burnish over that with the white and you can just see how that burnishes in there um let's just take out these bits here and we'll get the so this is the um, polychromos white. <clears throat> so do feel free to um, switch off, and then you can you can um, you know rewatch. Um, but I'd just like to sort of finish this. Really, it'd be, it'd be a shame not to. Um, but if you need to go, then I um, I completely understand. But it'd be quite nice to finish this little chap. He's gone a little bit fat down here, but it doesn't matter. So I'm burnishing here. I'm just kind of going over with this sort of roundy stroke just because there isn't really any any um well we know that the hair's kind of going that way but we just want it to be almost like a uh, just some shades in there so that's all okay there happy with that um right let's have a look at these little paws so we're looking at cinnamon this is that sort of browny pinky color um, and i'm just going to bring this not the best best drawn paws in the world but um you know i mean if if this were me drawing a, a portrait or something i would spend you know probably a, about an hour on um, on this area here just getting everything perfect but what we're wanting is just a an overall layer of that sort of pinky color and then i've got this awesome another pablo this is the um brownish beige so this is a this is another really really good color um and i'm just going to come in here and just build in some of those um sort of little uh, shadows and everything and again it's it's brownish beige but it's got a sort of like a quite a purpley hue to it so working with the pinks and the oranges is going to work really nicely so again being quite you know sort of sketchy um, you know, we're not going whole hog with the um, with the details and stuff like that on this. We just want it to look a little bit like a a mouse's paw. Got a little nail in there. And again, I'm just going to use the Tombow. Got it in my hand, and we'll just sort of get rid of that. And then into here. So, um, so if you if you are interested in another one of these where I will be on time and not be talking to myself, then um, you know do let me know because um, I'm going to be doing some in depth um, workshops. But those will be. I will charge for those, but I'm only going to charge a nominal price because what I'd like to do is. Um, maybe sort of like a couple of hours just drawing an eye or a type of fur or something like that. Um, I want to um, donate any course fees to charity. There's a charity opening up in my in my town um, for specifically for the coronavirus, um, and I just thought it'd be quite nice. I would only take sort of maybe 10, 15 people on one of those, and we'd do it via uh, Zoom. I've been doing quite a bit via Zoom recently. Um, and it would be, um, you know, you'd be drawing, I'd be drawing, we could talk, you could show me what you're doing, I can help, you know, uh, a little bit, you know, if you're struggling with something. So, um, you know, if you're interested in something like that, do let me know. And what I'm trying to do is set something up so that if you send me an email, you then get a response back with all of the information. Or, or maybe I'll set it up as a shopping cart or something on my uh, website, um, you know, so that we just get x amount of people and then we'll just do it all online um you know which i think could be quite nice really because all my workshops sadly i think all my workshops this year are going to be postponed um you know unless something drastic happens soon which i'm, I'm not sure whether it will 
Um, but, you know, things like that happen and, and there's other things that I can do, um, you know. So, uh, you know, if you are interested in something else, do let me know. Uh, so again I've got this little this little eraser here which is um, pretty cool I'm just getting out those graphite lines that's what I you know I prefer to um, not have an outline really and then I can just work but um, so this is this brownish beige again just coming in on this little leg here what type of light do I use Oh, it's a huge, great big photography softbox. I've got two of them. Um, this is the um, burnt ochre again that I'm using here. Uh, it's it's you know it's got daylight, it's got daylight bulbs in it, and it's uh, it's probably about two, two and a half foot by two foot. Um, I've looked at it now and I can't see anything. I'm blinded myself. <laughs> That's why I wear this little peaked um visor when i'm drawing um yeah so it's it's um i had to be really careful because i video i have to be really careful um that my videos don't flicker um and so i went through quite a lot of lights trying to find the one that wouldn't flicker and this this was the the best one um so they're not very expensive i got them from amazon so i'm using the cinnamon again here and just bringing this into here because this little bit here is a little bit pinky so we just bring a little bit of pinkiness into there. Um, and they're the Niwa um, lights. I got two of them for about £65, something like that. They're a nightmare to put up. Um, I got all hot and sweaty putting them up. <laughs> um, and uh, I think I had to watch a YouTube video to work out what I was supposed to be doing. I was like, what? Anyway, once I got them up, they were brilliant. Um, and it's been going... Um, it, well, it's lasting... A long time um, you know it's probably about two years now it's lasted it's brilliant um, you know so uh, saying that but it lights will pop now and we won't be able to see a thing so uh, yeah they're, they're really good ones but um, I think any daylight lamp if you're not videoing any daylight daylight lamp is good you know something that will clip onto your drawing board or something like that is, is good a good one to do so I'm just going to bring this little bit of um, the brownish beige into some of this fur out around here as well to get some of those pencil strokes in um, that little leg there this paw is not particularly brilliant is it but I think I'll bring in some of that uh, violet brown in there just to get a little bit more of a shadow like I say something like this I would take quite a long time to do this is more of a sketch than anything and then we'll just get a little bit of a shadow under that there So hopefully you can see all of that and then we can just bring a little bit of those fur lines into his paw there. That's all right. That's OK. Uh, right. So um, underneath his tummy here. So this is the cold grey, polychromos cold grey too. The polychromos, their range of greys is fantastic. Really, really good range of greys. And I use greys a lot, um, you know, sort of like an underpainting or, you know, whatever. Um, and then we come down a little bit more and then it goes goes warm. And this is where you get your warm and your cool, cool um, colours working really nicely together. And again, we're sort of, can you see how I'm kind of scribbling, but scribbling really softly and getting some nice blended colours in there. And then we can just down here where's little mousy tummy. We'll get rid of this in a second. Get rid of that line there. This eraser, somebody from America sent it to me. It's called a Vanish Eraser. It is amazing. Absolutely amazing. This is just a blusher brush that I just use to brush excess um, pencil dust off. Um, so again, let's just bring in this down here and then we can be quite sort of rough with that just get all of that sketched in okay and then i'm going to go back to using my light ochre i'm going to get rid of this pencil lines here 
The nice thing about smooth paper is that you can kind of rub off the pencil dust with your hand or a brush. With pastel mat, you'd just rub your whole <laughs> your whole drawing off. You'd be like, oh, <laughs> so um, you know, best best not to do that with pastel mat. Um, so again, I'm just coming down here. I'm going to use some more, you know, backwards and forwards strokes on my pencil just because this is a little bit denser around here, and then it becomes very very soft as it moves into that um, whitish area. So um, that's why I'm using these roundy strokes because you kind of lose the definition of the fur as it comes into here. So using those roundy strokes will just help you kind of blend it in. And then we're just going to go over here. I'm going to increase my pressure slightly so that I get a little bit more pigment coming into here. Excellent. And then I'm going to use that brownish beige again just in here. These Pablos are really, really nice on the um, on this nostalgia paper. They really are nice, really nice and soft. And actually you can use them a little bit harder, which is nice because you can get a, a bit more of a um, more control over where you're putting the pigment. Whereas the polys, they're much more, um, they seem to be much more rich in pigment on this paper. Um, the Pablos are softer. So it's like drawing, it's like drawing with velvet. It's lovely. And I use the, um, I haven't on this, but I use the Derwent products a lot. I love the Derwent pencils, um, the Derwent drawings, the, um, the light fast pencils. They're the, my favorites are the studios, which are just gorgeous, really, really lovely, subtle colors. Um, you know, so I do use the, um, the Derwent products a lot. Um, I've just had a, a package arrived yesterday with a with a load of pencils in, which is um, um, I I ordered them the other day and they they arrived next day. I was like, oh my goodness! But um, you know they are good pencils. So I have no idea if anybody else is still watching. I'm still probably listening, you know, talking away to myself. Um, but again, I really do hope that you've enjoyed, um, you know, what we've what we've been doing today. And, and thank you ever so much for joining me as well. Um, you know, I, I like I said before, I, I really do enjoy these sorts of sessions, chatting away and everything. My children don't enjoy them because they have to be quiet. So I'm surprised we haven't heard my 15 year old singing, to be honest. He's normally singing bedrooms above mine and he's normally singing away. So, right, again, we're going to just take the um, violet brown and we'll just get a little bit more of these sort of areas in here. Start to bring a little bit more of that thing in. And then we're nearly finished, actually. We're just going to put a little bit of that orange in on the bottom for the pot. You can, you can do, you know, you can create the pot and do the, you know, the mossy bits and whatever if you want. The photograph I've given you is my photo, so I took it, so I own the copyright on it. You can do whatever you like with it. Um, you know, if you want to credit me, credit me, that's fine. Um, you know, you can you can print the photo out, put it on your wall, you can do whatever you like with it. Um, draw it, sell it, sell it, you know, sell the original drawing that you've done from it, sell prints, you know, anything you want to do is, um, you can do with my pleasure. Um, so again, upward strokes up underneath so that we get this nice feel of, um, you know, the shadow underneath and the layering of the fur. We want to, we want to feel that, that you can run your fingers in that fur, um, you know. I mean, this is, this is a very quick little drawing for me, um, but actually I've really enjoyed it. Um, I've really enjoyed it. So yeah, he doesn't look too bad. Right, so we're just going to come down. I'm going to quickly do, do these little tootsies here. Again, sketchy, sketchy. <clears throat> oh God, my husky voice is coming out now. A um, bit of pink in there. This is the um, the cinnamon polychromos. So any sort of pink in there that you've got is fine. This little foot over here. I'm just going to do in the warm grey. 
So again, just, you know, softly, softly. And I'm going to take out the edge of that because I don't want the edgy bit in there. And we'll just get a little bit of grey in there just to sort of blend that a little bit. And I'm going to take my Tombow just to, I just want to get rid of some of this graphite in there. Okay, that's his little toes there, that's a bit dark in there actually. Um, oh, still here, don't worry. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Do I ever use OMS? So, uh, well, what happens when you start using coloured pencil? You hear about all of these different products and you buy them all. And, and that's exactly what I did. And I was like, oh my God, there's this amazing product. And, um, and if I buy it and put it on my pencil, it'll move it around and I don't have to worry about blending and all of that type of stuff. Um, so I bought it and I tried it and I hated it, I have to say. Um, but I only hated it because it gave me migraines. Um, I've got to be really careful with, with strong smells. This is the burnt sienna, by the way, the polychromous burnt sienna. Um, the, um, I'm, yeah, I'm really susceptible to migraines when it comes to smells. And the zest it that you can get in the UK um, is supposed to be a, a pleasant smell of citrus. Um, and it's absolutely vile, I have to say. <laughs> um, and it just oh, it made me so poorly. So no, I don't use um, OMS. Um, I find that I can get just as nice a finish on my pieces without using it, just by blending with my pencils. Now, um, there is a de definitely a place for OMS and people use it incredibly um, successfully. So if you wanted to use OMS and you wanted to go and have an art, look at an artist who uses it. So an artist who uses it, um, on smooth paper is Kirsty Partridge, um, very, very, very successful artist, huge following, um, and she uses it um, brilliantly on the stuff that she does. Um, then if you wanted to use it on pastel mat, which is, um, with pastel mat, well, I don't know whether it defeats the object or not, because you've still got to get a lot of layers down before you can use it. But if you did want to use it on pastel mat, you could not go more wrong than, um, or what's the word you couldn't go wrong anyway you should follow <laughs> um a an artist called claudia sketches and she's on youtube and she's on social media and she um she uses oms on on pastel map and it's the work she does is gorgeous so you know have a look at those two artists who do use oms i don't because um i don't need to because I just use my pencils in a different way and, and that's my technique but there's no right and wrong where it comes to um you know what you use uh you know so you just use what's what what feels right for you really uh right so I'm just going to use a little bit more of that brighter orange and then I'm just going to come in and do this bit here and then we are kind of done she says using that bright orange and then we've got some horrible fur lines in there now. So I'll just get my OMS out and smooth it off. No, I won't. <laughs> I'm going to use my um, uh, warm grey, I think. Yeah, warm grey too, just to sort of smooth that out a little bit. Or I could get my, uh, my pencil stump, I guess. My paper stump even and just sort of blend that out a little bit. Uh, you can get blenders, all of the pencil manufacturers um cell blenders um you know the derwent has a has a really good one uh karen dash has a really good one there colorless blender so um you know uh yeah they've all got they've all got blenders that work um and they've got burnishes as well you know if you want to go in over the top of something and really burnish it but with the paper that i use i tend not to use burnishing or um you know because like i said i don't really use this sort of paper this is um this is very this is very different for me drawing this way but I thought I'd use it this way because then I'm kind of in the same boat as everybody else right okay I'm just going to go in a little bit darker in his ear there so you can see where I've used the slice tool it's it's giving us some really nice texture in there let's blend that as well when you're blending it's about um just easing off uh, off your pressure as well so you can get a really nice blend from one color to the next just by easing off your pressure a little bit and we'll just add a little bit more in here a bit more in there um, 
Right, so we're going to come in and I'm just going to use the burnt um, ochre. Just move that over slightly. I hopefully, hopefully you won't lose me. I'm just going to use the burnt ochre and I'm just going to... Um, here. Can you put the name of your photography light in the materials list as well? I will. I will put everything in. Um, so this is just going to be really sketchy. I'm not going to. I'm not going to draw an amazing pot, just like I haven't drawn an amazing mouse. <laughs> so I'm just going to sort of like sketch, sketch this in. Might have to go a little bit orangey. Actually, that is really terracotta -y, orangey pot, isn't it? So I just need to show that he's actually sitting on something. So what I've done is I've just moved my fingers up the pencil slightly so that I can sort of get um, a nice soft feel to the um, the pencil line that I've got in there. Um, and then just a little bit darker for that shadow. And then it sort of goes like that, doesn't it? Let's get rid of that. So just gently sort of shading that in there. In fact, we'll start at this edge. Terracotta. So this is the Polychromos Terracotta, which is just a stronger orange. So just darken that lip up there and then put some purple in there as well. And then just layer that over the top of. And then what I'm going to do is just take that oops, Tombow here and just get rid of this um, graphite. You know, you could you could really go to town with the texture of this pot. You know, you could put all of those like little dimples and stuff like that in. But we're not going to do that. If you wanted to do it, you know, it would just be a case of getting all of your tones in first, your colour in, and then start to build up your um, the detaily areas. Let's just get a little bit more of this in here. Get in here. Just talk so you can't hear my son talking upstairs. Oh, that's quite nice actually because we're starting to get a little bit of texture in there, um, which is looking like the texture of the pot, which is quite good. So you can see a bit of the texture of the paper coming through. We always think that you know if you've got a if you've got a paper that's got a texture. You know, um, if you can use it to your advantage. So with the pastel mat, it's quite grainy, or it can be quite grainy. Well, if I'm drawing a horse, um, you know, the the fur around the eyes, uh, or the hair around the eyes, can be can look quite grainy because it's very very short and stubbly. So letting the paper really help you um, create that um, that feeling is, um, you know, works really really well. Okay, let's bring that down a little bit more. And that's your little pot there. And then, does the slice tool work on all papers? No, it doesn't. Um, 
it works on so it works on pastel mat it works on the drafting film it works on this it works on the um the vellum the bristol vellum the bristol smooth bristol plate works on the fabriano um some watercolor papers it doesn't work on so if you were going to get one um it's always 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 best to just double check whether it works or not don't go don't go and slice into it um because you know it may well just take the whole of your surface off which would be absolutely disastrous so uh, you know you always have to test it but it generally works on most papers but you do have to be really careful with it um and using it in a in a way some people sort of like get you know a bit confusing as to how to use it you don't use it in a cutting motion you use it in a sort of a scraping motion um, and that works that seems to work the best so just putting in a lot of shadows in there um and we're pretty much we're pretty much done i think um just adding a little bit more color in there i might just use the terracotta in there a little bit actually and bring in a little bit of that colour. Um, a little tip for really um, strengthening colour and bringing out, um, you know, making colours look richer um, is to use something like, um, anyway, I won't be able to find it now, the orange glaze, which I can't find. <laughs> um, put it there. Oh, here we go. This is the orange glaze here. So this is the polychromos orange glaze. So this is a really good one if you want to just make something a little bit vibrant, more vibrant. Um, you can just very, very lightly, um, what we call glazing. Um, I mean, I, I tend to make my own words up, but this is, this is kind of glazing where you're just really, really putting soft pressure in over the top of other colours. And what will happen is, uh, it's, it's, it's like I kind of... Um, I liken it to, you know, when you see something out of the corner of your eye and then you move your head and it's kind of not there, but you know that there's something there. That's what I liken glazing to. You put a colour in and when somebody looks at it, they go, oh, I, I can see a colour there, but I'm not quite sure what it is. And that that's that's what's really nice about glazing. You can put some really lovely colours in. So, you know, black dogs, you can put pink, you can glaze pinks into black dogs. Um, you know, you can glaze yellows into black dogs and you know, it'll still look like a black dog, but, you know, you'll have some real vibrant colours in there that just give it an extra something, um, you know. So I think we're, um, I think we're done. I think my little mousy mousy is done. I'm just going to pull a few more little whiskers into here. And then if anybody has got any questions, if you're, um, you know, if you're still online and you want to, you want to ask any questions, do, do ask away um i may well just come on and and have a look um you know and answer anybody's questions but um i just want to say thank you so much for joining me i hope you've enjoyed it i i'm so sorry about the beginning bit <laughs> where i'd done half of the mouse all on my own thinking you were all there with me honestly you know people who know will be know me will be like yeah well yeah well that doesn't that that doesn't surprise us at all um but i do i do apologize about that and i hope that you will join me again um you know if i when i do another not if but when i do another of these because uh, you know I, think I i quite like it and i quite like that people you know will join me and and maybe be you know a little less lonely um you know so um I think I've sent you all the questions we've had so far. Oh, that's fine. Well, if anybody else does want to ask me any questions or anything like that, you know, please do get in touch. But um, I am going to um, leave this for now and I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and um, take care, everybody. Keep safe. Stay at home. Um, wash your hands <laughs> and, um, and keep drawing. So, uh, you know, thank you. Thank you ever so much for joining me.